Deeth Goil Dewey Happith, or Happy St David's Day. This assembly is all about the Welsh patron saint, St David. St David's Day is actually coming up very soon on the 1st of March. It's the perfect occasion to have an assembly all about St David. What do you think a saint is? Pause the video here to have a think. Come back when you're ready. I think a saint is someone who is holy. I think a saint is someone who has lots of courage. I think a saint is someone who's kind. I think a saint is an incredible person. I think a saint is very important and has done some very special things. A saint is someone who's very proud of their country. Did you think of any of those things, Custom? Well done if you did. But what's a patron saint? St David is a patron saint of Wales. What do you think that might mean? A patron saint is someone regarded so special that they are the protector of a place or a country. Each of the four countries that make up the UK and Ireland all have a patron saint. And each of these saints has their own special saint's day. On the 1st of March, it's St David's special day. Who was St David? He was a real person, although lots of the information about him comes from stories and legends. He was at the heart of the Welsh church in the 6th century. He came from a rich family in West Wales. His mother was a saint, Saint Non. His teacher was also a saint, Saint Palinus. <laughs> The story begins in a monastery where David was learning to be a monk. It was a very simple place made of wood with walls made of sticks plastered with mud. A roof of straw or rushes kept out the rain. Around the monastery were other simple buildings where the monks ate, studied and slept. In one of these buildings young David sat and listened to the wise words of his tutor called Paulinus. Paulinus was a wise man a good man, a holy man, but he was old and his sight was growing dim. He felt sad as he peered at the Bible. He could barely make out the letters. How could he teach his pupils if he could no longer see to read? As the days passed, Paulinus found it harder and harder to see anything at all. Everything was growing dim and dark for him. Now, even on the sunniest days, he had to feel his way along, using his hands to guide him. He would touch the walls to find his way around the buildings and to his seat in front of his class. David sat in front of the elderly monk, listening to him struggle to read the words in the great Bible in front of him. He felt so sorry for him. If only I could help him see clearly again, he thought. But what could he do? Then, early one morning, Paulinus woke and found that he could see nothing at all. He was entirely blind. How he wept. He fell to his knees by his bed and prayed, God, hear my prayer. Restore my sight so that I may continue to serve you and do your work. I have guided many young monks. I have tried my best to prepare them to do your work too. May they now help me. Let your Holy Spirit enter them, so that the touch of their hands on my eyes will restore my sight. That morning, as the young monks filed into the room, Paulinus told them what had happened. How sad the monks were when they heard what he said. I pray that by touching my eyelids, one of you will be able to restore my sight, Paulinus said. So, one by one, the monks came forward and gently laid their fingers on their beloved teacher's closed eyes. How eager they were to help restore their teacher's sight! How sad they were, and they saw that he still could not see. At last, it was David's turn. He had held back to the end, certain that he could not do what others could not. Shyly, he came forward. 
Paulinus could not see the young monk, but he knew that it was David who now stood before him. David who prayed so hard for his sight to be restored. David who touched his eyelids so gently. If anyone can heal my poor eyes, it is David, thought Paulinus. Gently, David took his hands away from his teacher's face and slowly Paulinus opened his eyes. A joyful smile spread across his face. He could see how startled the monks were, how happy David was. Paulinus thanked God for sending him the young monk, David, but in a way he felt sad too. He was sure that soon David would leave the monastery. What more could he, Paulinus, teach him? David must go out into the world and do God's work. And soon David did indeed leave, and in time he built his own monastery, the very one where St. David's Cathedral now stands. David's Day is commemorated by the wearing of daffodils or leeks. Why leeks? One version is that St. David advised the Britons on the eve of a battle with the Saxons to wear leeks in their caps so they could easily distinguish friend from foe. This apparently helped to secure a great victory. Why daffodils? Leeks and daffodils have similar names in Welsh. Kenhinen, leek, and Kenhinen beder, daffodil. Some people believe that this is why daffodils are also national emblems of Wales. St David's Day, some children wear the national dress of Wales. This consists of a tall black hat, white frilled cap and a long dress. The biggest event is a St David's Day parade which makes its way right across Cardiff city centre. There are colourful street dances and school children and youth groups dressed in Welsh traditional costume and Welsh traditional music. As part of the St David's Day parade, celebrities have been known to give performances. Many villages and towns in Wales arrange the St David's Parade on the 1st of March. Some parades are very colourful with flags being waved as well as sculptures of the red dragon being carried. Children sing Welsh songs such as the Welsh National Anthem and Calon Lan. Thank you for listening to my Assembly Cuxton. Happy St David's Day!